Hi, I'm Bloodfish, and welcome to my video on the redstone tick, pulse, and delay. Let's get started. What is a redstone tick? Well, essentially, a redstone tick is equivalent to a tenth of a second or two game ticks. What do I mean by this? It means that if I put ten repeaters, each one one tick of delay in a row, then one second after I press this button, this redstone lamp will turn on, just like this. One second. Now, this redstone tick is unaffected by a change in the random tick speed, so if I change the random tick speed to 1000, it's still, like, that still's the same speed, which is kind of unfortunate because we all want supersonic fast redstone contraptions to make our lives easier and faster, and the default value is 3. After explaining about the redstone tick, I should also explain about the redstone delay and pulse, but first of all, to clarify, this is a monostable circuit, it produces a one tick pulse. I'll explain what this does later on. So, redstone delay. Redstone delay is defined as how long something takes to switch on. So, like th that's a definition I just came up with on the spot. So, in these two examples over here, we can see that the circuit on the left has four ticks of delay. So, four repeaters, each on one tick of delay. The circuit on the right has eight ticks of delay. So, eight repeaters, each on one tick of delay. So, naturally, this redstone lamp will switch on before this redstone lamp does. So, it's just like this. This is redstone delay. Redstone pulse is different. Redstone pulse is defined as how long something stays on for. So if we look at the very last repeater, like powering the components, we can see that this 4 tick repeater is powering this redstone lamp for 4 ticks of pulse, while this repeater is powering this redstone lamp for 1 tick pulse. So, like this redstone lamp will stay on for much longer. Also worth mentioning that these two circuits have the exact same delay of 4, so like, what this means is that these two redstone lamps will switch on at the exact same time, but this redstone lamp will stay on for much longer, just like this this and that is what redstone delay and pulse are and again just yeah why should i use a monostable circuit in my build well a monostable can help you limit the pulse length of your activation component in this case it's a wooden button a wooden button has a pulse length of about 15 redstone ticks which honestly is just far too long for any normal redstone contraption if we compare these two circuits over here this circuit doesn't have a monostable but this one has in this circuit, this button is directly powering this piston uh, through these repeaters, so this piston will stay on for 15 redstone ticks and then deactivate, just like this. But in this circuit over here, because of one stable circuit, it decreases the pulse length from 15 down to 1, so this one tick pulse travels through the circuit into this piston, so this piston will spit out its block, like that. Now if we compare these two circuits over here, you can see that in this circuit, I'm sorry, this circuit, that is... Like because the pulse is prolonged, so like all these uh, repeaters will switch on, like like that, at, for a certain amount of time. Uh, but in this circle over here, you can see that the repeaters will pass along their pulse. So like, like that, they pass it along. Like, yeah, hard to explain. You get the idea. So like the benefits of using a smaller pulse length, so like using a monostable circuit, would be like you don't have to worry about a longer pulse length, of course, and you can focus on like the delay that the components have to like make your circuit a lot more accurate and secondly like you don't have to worry about simultaneously like powering bridging paths so like if i just make an example over here so like i just create two bridging paths you can see in um this circuit that both pistons like the repeaters will stay on for a certain amount of time like that but in this circuit this piston will activate and then deactivate before this piston activates and deactivates it's like kind of like a safety lock safety system so like you don't have interference between your co your components which is kind of good and yeah here are two examples of a monostable circuit being used in actual situation so the first example is in a piston free tape if i power this piston free tape with a button you can see because of a long pulse length like this piston stays extended for far too long so this piston cannot push the box across so this circuit cannot be completed and now is like temporarily broken it doesn't work anymore but if I power this piston fit it with a monostable circuit, however, then the pistons will activate really quickly. They don't interfere with each other, and so the circuit works again like that. The second reason why I use a monostable circuit is observers. Observers are good for compacting your redstone contraptions. So if I just run a monostable into a, an observer, then you can see because of a short pulse length, the observer only detects the change once. So the piston gets powered once. But if I just run a button wire directly into an observer, the observer will detect when the redstone wire is switched on and switched off. So two state changes, which isn't our intended result. So yeah, two more reasons why we use monostable circuits. Insert wandering villager disturbing video joke. These are these guys are just so annoying. 
Different redstone components for different delays. This delay can range from 0 ticks of delay, 1 tick of delay, 2 ticks of delay, and 40 ticks of delay. So I've grouped up the most commonly used redstone components into the respective delays. Let's take a look. At 0 ticks of delay, we have the redstone wire, trapdoors, doors, fence gates, three types of rails, redstone lamp, no block, tripwire hook, uh, all types of pressure plates, and wooden buttons, and lever. We have three exceptions over here, which would include the wooden button and stone button, which have a 15 pulse strength and 10 pulse strength respectively, but all the pressure plates have the exact same pulse strength of 5. And then we also have the redstone lamp, which switches on immediately, like immediately, but it has a 2 tick pulse length, so it, yeah, it doesn't switch off immediately. For one tick of pulse, like one tick of delay, we have the redstone torch repeater, which default value is set one tick of delay, but we can set change this value to one tick of delay, two ticks of delay, three ticks of delay, and four ticks of delay. We also have the comparator, observer, and pistons. Now the observer will uh, output a one tick pulse, so this can be used as a makeshift monostable circuit. While the pistons, they have a one tick delay, but when you switch it off, they don't have any delay on upon like the activation. So if you look over here, this is the piston line. I have three pistons, so you would expect a three tick delay when you switch it on. But when you switch it off, they all deactivate instantly like that. It's kind of weird, but yeah. Um, at two ticks of delay, we have the, red the dispenser and dropper, which like two ticks after I press this button, it'll dispense an item like, like that. And finally, four ticks of pulse, which, well, like the TNT activates instantly, but the fuse takes four ticks to explode, which is kind of crucial because you don't want your like just a miscalculation of your delay and just TNT just blows up your whole system which isn't really good and also like same applies for a dispenser like if you just misfire a dispenser at the wrong time like it could dispense a water bucket and destroy your whole circuit which would be really bad and that's why this is very important after the explanation here's an exercise here I have three different circuits each with a varying level of difficulty and different redstone delay so I want you to like count the amount of delay before this redstone lamp like, goes on. So let's start off like the first circuit. The first circuit, we just count the amount of delay on the repeaters, which is very simple. And I'll go back. For the second circuit, you just count the amount of components and also like the delay they have. But there's like a special case in here to see if you can find it. And then thir finally, third circuit. This is like a compound of the last two circuits, so yeah, it's going to be harder. And this is a monostable circuit, just the same. Okay, so in 3, 2, 1, I will reveal the answers right now. For the first circuit, we just count the amount of delay. Very simple. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 ticks of delay. For the second circuit, we count the amount of components. So, let's then torch 1, comparator to 2, repeater 3. So one, two, three. But like the piston, you can see here that this isn't extending. This is deactivating, so it's de like retracting. Like in this example over here, we, we learned that when pistons deactivate, they don't have any delay. So this is omitted from the example. So we just count these two. So like redstone torch one, comparator one, and repeater one. So three ticks of delay in total, just like this. And finally, the third circuit. Observer one, repeater two. So one, two, three, four five six seven seven ticks of delay let's don't know block has no delay and also here you might have counted the piston like and like just as a mistake but here is an explanation it's because this repeater is actually powering this repeater through this block it's not like directly powering this piston but it's not supposed to like power this piston it's, it doesn't it doesn't contribute to the final delay so this isn't counted either so that's why in front of me, I have the final example of why redstone delay is so important. This is a sand launcher, which when I was building it, I factored in every single variable to contribute to a final outcome. These variables include how tall this thing is built at, like where the pistons are, the delay each piston gets, and how fast the sand falls at. So when I press this button, the sand will be launched at a distance over there, something like that. So, like this. This is why redstone delay is so important um this wasn't supposed to happen give me a second as i was saying precision and accuracy now it should work now see sand launcher works first time so like that failure was a perfect example of why you really should like take note of this delay so suppose i would like you, i was to build this contraption in another world another server or anything and then i just mess up this repeater 
Like if I just like made it one tick of delay that shorter, then the sand would just fall back onto this piston. Now imagine if this wasn't a piece of sand, it was a gravity block, a piece of gravel, concrete powder, or even TNT. If this was powered TNT, your contraption would have just blown up and you would have to build this whole thing again. Like my point over there, you, it would cause you a lot of distress and probably depression too. So that is why redstone delay is very, very important. And yeah. There you go. This has been my video on the redstone delay tick and pulse. I hope you've learned something this video and you can like post any redstone questions you have in the comments and I'll see if I can answer them next video. So, goodbye.